welcome to the UGC lecture series. This is the EPG Patashala lecture series on the subject of computer science and we are talking about the paper machine learning. Now we are going to look at a new uh, type of machine learning technique called semi supervised learning. In fact, we had looked at supervised learning and then we looked at unsupervised learning in the form of clustering and now we are going to look at semi supervised learning. So, uh, the, uh, the team that is responsible for creating this module is shown here. The learning objectives of this module are to understand the concept of semi supervised learning, uh, to discuss how it is different from other methods, why is it needed and why how it is different from other methods, to discuss the different algorithms associated with semi supervised learning and uh, to discuss bootstrapping within which we have self training and co training. And the terminology or keywords here are unlabeled data, self training and co training. Now, semi supervised learning falls between as, as you know unsupervised learning where we do not have any labeled training data at all and supervised learning with which we have completely labeled training data. What is the meaning of that? That the training data is sufficient to determine the labels that is the meaning of completely labeled training data and uh, so, uh, unsupervised we do not have any training data. So, when we try to learn predictive tasks. Uh, using both labeled and unlabeled data, but this unlabeled data typically a small part of the labeled data with a large amount of unlabeled data. So, if you, if you have too much of labeled data it becomes supervised. So, what we are doing here is we have a lot of unlabeled data and a small typically small amount of labeled data in that way predictive uh, tasks will be better. So, that is called as semi supervised learning. So, if you take a uh, labeled data and a lot of unlabeled data and you apply an algorithm to learn a model using that algorithm, then you call that as semi supervised learning or SSL and examples of semi supervised learning are self training and co training. Now, uh, let us take an example, here you have labeled data, so these data points have been given blue is uh, one label and red is another label. Now, you have supervised uh, uh, learning, the job of supervised learning is to find a boundary between the labels. So, it is actually you are trying to find a, a point where you can uh, separate the two data sets. So, that is what you are modeling. Semi supervised you have labeled and unlabeled data and uh, you will see that the amount of labeled data will be less, you will have more of unlabeled data and you will try to fit a model in such a way that you are dividing the two. If you see here the division is completely different because of the availability of unlabeled data itself, you would have thought unlabeled data will not contribute, it does contribute. So, first of all the question arises why should we go for semi supervised, ok. For many pr uh, problems labeled data, if you provide enough of labeled data, uh, it can be done, very good supervised learning algorithms can be done, but however, for many problems labeled data can be rare or it can be very expensive. So, the acquisition of labeled data for a learning problem often requires a skilled human agent or a physical experiment which is costly. An example of this is suppose I want um, uh, to do pass tagging ok, part of speech tagging of, a, of the words of a document, then I should have a linguistic expert who sits and tags those for me and I should have a huge amount of such data in order for supervised algor algorithm to act on the statistics of the data or I need to do some physical experiment which turns out to be costly. So, unlabeled data is much cheaper because it is existing there in large quantity, finding a large corpus of text is not a problem, labeling it is a problem. So, this unlabeled data is easily accessible and uh, you uh, by using a combination of this we can produce considerable improvement in the learning accuracy. Now, the question arises can I can I try do it with, unla, uh, with unsupervised, now the, uh, the supervised puts you rigidly into a training form unsupervised you go along and you try to find a uh, uh, you know a pattern within the data which we saw last time, but in un, in semi supervised you are sort of uh, focusing your uh, unsupervised to go in the right direction. So, can we make use of this cheap unlabeled data to do our uh, learning problem. So, let us look at using unlabeled data for supervised learning. So, you can how do you use it? There are different ways of using it. One way of using it is you can use it to reweight, reweight, weighting the labeled examples. 
you can use the unlabeled data to help some algorithm like the EM algorithm which we have not yet learnt we will go about later to go for class specific generative models and if problem has redundancy sufficient features we can use co-training also which uh, we can use that uh, the unlabeled data to go about doing co-training we will come to that later and you can also sort of uh, detect or preempt overfitting if you have unlabeled data because if you supervised learning always had that problem if you have too much of data and you want to exactly fit the model then you have this problem of overfitting. So, this is some of the cases if you look at this uh, figure here you will understand it is an example taken from the journal. So, you have label instances and you have found a decision uh, boundary without unlabeled data. Now, uh, if you have unlabeled instances given this way more accurate decision boundaries you are able to find in the presence of unlabeled instances. So, with unlabeled data you are able to find the correct uh, accurate decision boundary. So, please note that uh, the semi supervised the use of unlabeled data is not only because of the costliness of providing labeled data or a supervised method of data, but it is also to improve supervised learning. Now, let us look at semi supervised learning uh, example of hard to get labels is uh, where they are uh, widely used example task is speech analysis I have a switchboard data set telephone conversation transcription 400 hours of annotation time for each hour of speech if this is so I can use it uh, this is an example where it is very hard to get the annotation done. Another example is to recognize faces and images it is hard to get lots of labeled face images, but it is easy to get unlabeled that is not a problem ok. So, let us look at what this is let us assume this is a class 1 samples and class 2 samples and this is the decision boundary in the supervised approach. Now, I get unlabeled samples now my decision boundary changes. So, that is basically what we were trying to say. So, if I have only 2 samples I have this I have only small number of uh, label samples in this example. Now, if I use the extra uh, unlabeled samples I will get a better uh, approach using this I mean a better decision boundary using the super uh, semi supervised approach. Now, classifier based approaches start with initial classifier and iterate and enhance them. So, uh, you have the expectation maximization and algorithm which will be going into later on self training which is a Yarowski algorithm very famous algorithm and code training these are different methods. Database methods are also there discovering in an inherent geometry in the data and exploit it to find a good classifier that is another method this is what is called as manifold regular regularization. So, let us look at this then you have what is called as transductive learning two types of semi supervised learning transductive uh, learning that is it does not generalize to unseen data it does not do that it produces labels only for the data at training time and assumes the labels trains classifiers on the assumed labels and then it keeps doing this in inductive learning what it does it does generalize to unseen data but not only produces labels but also the final classifier so it is a manifold assumption so you have transductive learning and inductive learning. Now, let us look at bootstrapping, bootstrapping is a very very interesting technique that has been used uh, as a semi supervised method. The general scheme is like this what you do is in the initial supervision that is uh, the supervisor label examples you give seed examples for training an initial model or you can give the seed model itself that is indicative features that you are going to use. This examples will be quite small in number that is the initial supervision given then you classify the corpus here we are taking document I will give an example with the document uh, corpus with the model that you have developed either directly given model or you got the model from the seed examples. Then what you do add the most confident classification to training. So, uh, whichever um, uh, you found was the best I mean you classified very confidently that you add it to the training and you keep iterating it. So, the bootstrapping approaches there are two approaches self training which is the Yavrovsky's method and co training. So, this bootstrapping I will tell you a typical example suppose I have to um, tag a word ok for simple uh, assume let us uh, tag a word as a noun. 
So, what I give is I give it a seed sample. Now, deciding on how the seed sample representation should look like is an important issue. So, maybe I will take the previous word, the next word and its post tag also. So, this may be the, this three, three uh, component is my seed sample and then I form a pattern. So, the pattern could be what are the noun and before that what is the tag that came and after that, that could be a pattern. How to define the pattern is also an issue. Use this pattern and find out or uh, mark all the nouns. So, that will give me exact matching, no learning has happened. Okay. Now, I take this pattern and I try to change the pattern such that you uh, doing using some methodology, scoring methodology which I am not discussing in detail here and then this is the self training aspect and then I get a new pattern and I keep doing this till I have finished. So, this is a very interesting and magical way of uh, actually doing a learning problem. So, start with a few seed rules, typically high precision ro uh, low recall that means we are not accounting for everything. Use classify to label the unlabeled data, extract new rules from the pseudo labeled data and build a classifier for the next iteration. Exit if labels of unlabeled data are unchanged, else apply classifier to unlabeled uh, data instances and continue. So, what you start with the seed rules, use classify to label the unclassified data. Now, that classifier that you are using, you are using only in a limited sense. So, you have zero label data, use that for the next iteration and then you go back. Okay. Now, the parameters for cell training and code training, create a pool of examples u dash, choose p random samples from u and uh, uh, how do you choose? Then loop for i iterations, uh, train c i on l and label u dash. Okay. Select G the most confident examples and add it to L. L is the number of um, patterns that we are using and maintain a distribution in error. Refill U dash with examples from U and keep U dash at constant size P. So, do not increase P uh, that the number of patterns. So, this is the pool size, this is the number of iteration, pool size is the number of seed patterns we are going to use and this is the growth size, train on select G that is, that is how many samples do you want to consider that is called the growth size. So, code training two classifiers, you use a local classifier and a topical classifier, you use two types of classifiers and in self training you have only one classifier which is a global classifier. So, now let us go, go into self training in detail, self training is a wrapper method for semi supervised learning and the inner loop of base learners is a supervised learning algorithm. Why is it called a supervised learning algorithm? What you have there is you take the um, uh, patterns and whatever exactly matches those patterns that is the inner loop. So, that is exact learning and it is a base learner. The outer loop is given a seed set of rules to start with and to in each iteration it uses the current set of rules to assign labels to unlabeled data, current set of rules or current patterns whatever it, uh, it is called. Some people call it rules and some people use patterns, but actually patterns can be represented as rules also. And then you assign labels and then uh, you now you have to um, select those instances on which the base learners predictions are the most confident and construct a label training set from them. So, now you have a new label training set from that you can get a new pattern, pattern or rule. It then calls the inner loop to construct a new classifier that is a new set of rules and the cycle repeats. Let us just look at this more in detail. The inner loop is a base learner or a supervised learning. So, if given a pattern it will just learn or the exact, le exact learning. The outer loop is a given a seed set of rules to start with. In each, each iteration it uses the current set of rules to assign labels to the unlabeled data. Then of that um, labeled uh, new labeled data on those instances, it will uh, select the most confident examples and it will construct or uh, construct a label uh, training algorithm. So, now you have a new classifier with a new set of rules and then you try to repeat this from again, from the uh, second step again. So, a base model is trained with small or large amount of labeled data, the base model is then used to classify the unlabeled data. So, only the most confident unlabeled points along with the predicted labels are incorporated into the label set which is called as pseudo labeled data. 
the base model is retrained and the process is repeated. So, you start with the base model and that base model keeps getting uh, retrained. So, this is uh, and the process is repeated and so on. So, this is the self training algorithm. So, the input instant x and the label y. So, the learner will learn from the input space to the uh, label y. The label data you have and the unlabeled data you have without the labels. The unlabeled data is available during training. Usually, the number of uh, labels is less than or equal to n. Then you have the test data. This test data, test data, this is not available during training. So, this is the self learning uh, algorithms uh, in the details. Uh, so, one's own high confidence predictions are correct. So, the self training algorithm will predict and add to the label data set those which you feel is highly confident. How do you decide that? There are many methods in which this is decided. One of the method is that the pattern which is newly formed or the rule which is newly formed and which is matching with the highest number of unlabeled instances probably could be the most confident one. So, there are different methods in which that is called a scoring. So, let us say take an example of word sense disambiguation. Okay. What is the meaning of word sense disambiguation? Given a word, it will try to find what is the sense of the word that word can have more than one sense. For example, if you take the um, word cricket, okay. so cricket can mean the play, uh, the game of cricket or it can mean the bird cricket. So, the cricket has a two senses. So, word sense disambiguation is the problem of selecting a sense for a word from a set of predefined possibilities. So, here the cricket had two senses predefined, one was a bird and one was the game. So, it has to decide which is correct. Here we have only two possibilities, there could be other uh, more than two possibilities also. So, the assumption here is there is only one sense per collocation, that is, we are assuming that in a sentence that word can get only one sense and one sense per discourse. So, depending on upon what is available, the same sense will be given. So, self training identify all examples of the given word plant. So, create initial label data using a small number of seed collocations. Okay. So, sense A of plant is life and sense B of plant is factory. So, this is what is the initial da label data set. Then train a classifier, baseline classifier, apply the classifier to the entire set, filter and augment this addition with the trained data, seed set grows and residential set shrinks. So, repeat until there is convergence. So, what happens here is now what will happen? You will uh, you have life and you have manufacturing. Now, you have other uh, life, animal, manufacturing, employee and equipment all those come in. So, what is happening is the sets are getting expanded. So, this is the iterative updating and uh, this is again it continues still almost all the data points have been stop when the residential uh, residual uh, set stabilizes that is there is no more change and it remains as it is. Now, let us go to the other aspect of uh, semi supervised training which is called as code training. You have two views of the data here. It assumes that each example is described using two different feature sets that provide different complementary information about the instance. This is quite interesting. So, what we are doing is we are having a data point and that data point can can be uh, for example, let us assume you have an object, the object can be um, classified according to its color or it can be uh, according to its size, but you have to choose complementary information about the instance. Okay. So, uh, you assume that it is uh, described using two different feature sets and ideally the two features are conditionally independent. So, the size does not determine the color or the color does not determine the size. The two feature sets of each instance of the instances are conditionally independent given the class. Now, and each view is sufficient to determine the class, that is another assumption we make. The class of an instance can be accurately predicted from each view alone. For example, let us take a cricket ball. Okay. So, for example, uh, if it is red, it is a cricket ball. If it is of a particular size, it is a cricket ball. So, the class can be found out irrespective of nowadays you have white also, I am just taking that example cricket ball. So, each view is sufficient to determine the class. Now, create small label training data set, train two supervised classifiers on the current training. So, using different views, use two classifier to label the res residu uh, residual unlabeled instances, 
select best newly labeled data to add to the training data. Best, best means comparing both the classifiers, adding instances labeled by C1 to the training data set for C2 and those labeled by C2 to the training data set of C1 and you keep iterating this. So, here in the previous example of self training, what we did is we took the, uh, the most confident one and added to the same set. Here we are not doing it like this, we are having two different classifiers and classifier C1 is most confident we are adding to C2 because we are classifying and using the same label and the most confident of C2 we are adding to C1 and we are keeping on doing this. Okay, so, this is the uh, co-training approach, you have a subset X1 and subset X2 and uh, you do training based on the unlabeled data based on one classifier and the other classifier and use the classification of I mean classified examples of one to increase the subset of the other one, the training set used for training and so on. So, this is the co-training approach and this co-training has been given by Blum and Mitchell in 1998 and uh, it is given this way, given the label data L and the unlabeled data U, the loop is at this, train G1 the hyperlink classifier using L and train G2 the page classifier, this he is uh, using it for the page rank algorithm. So, the hyperlink classifier means the hyperlinks in the page and page classifier depending on some content, allow G1 to label P positive and N negative samples from U, allow G2 to label P positive and N negative samples from U and then add these self label uh, examples to L and repeat the loop. So, let us take an example here. Here you have a text classifier and a visual classifier and here you have the initial uh, labeled instances. So, you have text giving a positive, visual giving a positive, text giving a negative, text giving. So, this is the uh, uh, initially labeled instances. Then uh, this is uh, separated into two as text view and uh, visual view and uh, now you have unlabeled instances and uh, the partially labeled instances classify most confident instances of the visual classifier and the label all views in the instances and uh, similarly retrain the classifiers. Similarly, you do for text also. So, the text and visual view you take and then you label a new instance such that both will give you the correct label. So, this is a transjective SVM or S3 VM it is called. The idea is to find the largest margin, this is also a semi supervised approach. So, you find the largest margin classifier such that unlabeled data are outside the margin as much as possible and use reg regularization over the unlabeled data. So, you are given a training set T and an un unlabeled uh, set U, find all plausible uh, la labelings U1 to UN on U. For each of the TK, T belong to UK, train a standard SVM, choose the SVM with the largest margins. So, that is another method. So, this is the SVM with labeled data only, this is the unlabeled instances you, as you can see and this is the S3VM uh, boundary which you find that the boundary is different because of the presence of unlabeled instances. If you can see we started off with this as in semi supervised, if you can see here the unlabeled instances get clustered together around the positive and negative and allow though they are not clustered, they are not labeled as such, they allow the boundary to differentiate the two appropriately. So, there are also graph based algorithms, the idea is to create a connected graph from label to unlabeled examples and propagate the labels across the graph, it is called the label propagation algorithm. We are not going to go into detail about this, just to say that graph based algorithms are also present which uses both label and unlabeled data. There is also a semi supervised version of expectation maximization, though we have not touched upon expectation ma maximization. It is a popular iterative algorithm for maximum likelihood estimation and problems with missing data. So, it consists of two step basically expectation step is to fill the missing data and maximization step to calculate the new maximum uh, a, a posteriori estimate for the parameters. This is uh, using the Bayes theorem. So, the semi supervised EM incorporates unlabeled data into the uh, the like EM. We have not talked about the working of the EM, we will talk about that later. So, you have the basic expectation maximization algorithm, you augment it with weighted unlabeled data and you augment the EM with multi mixture components per class, it depends on how you are going to augment the data. So, train a classify with only the label uh, documents or data, 
use it to probabilistically classify the unlabeled documents. Most examples are used uh, documents as examples, so the, I mean as uh, your uh, data and then use all the documents to train the new classifier. So, you are probabilistically are classifying the un unclassified documents. So, you uh, uh, keep uh, repeating the steps 2 and 3 until convergence occurs. So, this is the EM algorithm. So, you learn an initial name based in classify F from only the label set. Then for each the example D in the unlabeled, use the current classification F to compute the probability and then learn a new name based classifier with this unlabeled uh, 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 with the samples got from the unlabeled also until the classifier parameters stabilize. Uh, so, this is the unsupervised clustering. Okay. Now, semi supervised you have uh, data points and uh, this is the, so what happens is this uh, unsupervised uh, becomes, this is a semi supervised and becomes fully classified. So, now we have uh, spoken about and explained the concept of semi supervised learning as, as against supervised learning and unsupervised learning and then we discussed why we needed the semi supervised learning. One was because data was not available, label data was not available and expensive. The second is it actually improves the performance of a semi supervised learning algorithm also, even the performance of an unsupervised learning algorithm. And we explained the different algorithms associated with semi supervised learning including the bootstrapping algorithm and we explained the self training and co training uh, examples of or methodologies associated with bootstrapping. So, that is what we covered in this module, thank you.